It's The Local Show on News Radio 570 WSYR, a service of Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts and Geddes Federal Savings and Loan. The Local Show, featuring conversations with business owners, employees, and local business leaders about their successes, challenges, and reasons for doing business right here in Central New York. The Local Show is locally produced by Zoe Advertising. Now, your hosts. Tom and Steve. Welcome back and welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. This is our number two of The Local Show. Get ready for engaging interviews with attorney John Murphy, owner of Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts. Pat Winslow stops by. He's a real hot dog. We'll talk about uh, Hides of Liverpool. And then Linda Ryan, the director of business development at the Syracuse Regional Airport Authority. And we'll see what's cooking over there. We're broadcasting from the Zoe Advertising Studio, sponsored by Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts and get us federal savings and loan and then we say uh how are you there john murphy i am doing great i don't know what i'm doing with that list of uh, laudatory people but i'm happy to be here nonetheless oh no you're you're much brighter than all of us you're the uh, smartest guy in the room well and that's damning with faint praise (laughs) if there ever was Uh, how's things going how's the holidays shaping up for you You wonderful wonderful we had i actually put this in our newsletter for our care clients we had about 18 people and um not all of my children were home, but my uh, son who's in the Navy got to be home. And uh, Oh, nice. And my sister and brother-in-law were there. We haven't had them with us for a long time and two of their kids. So it was, it was really great. We had a great, great Thanksgiving. Are you a grandfather yet? I am not. Okay, good. I hate to think of you as a grandfather. I hate to think of me as a grandfather. <laughs> I'd like to think that I'm more grandfatherly in my approach to life, and I you think are. that's a good thing. But uh, yeah. I, I, I haven't had that blessing yet. <laughs> how, long, how long have you been an attorney? I've been an attorney about 35 years, probably. Wow, that's quite a bit, huh, Steve? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's a long as long as you've been in yeah, marketing. Yeah, no, that's that is a long time. You mm. you mentioned a, uh, a care client. Explain what that is, because folks may not know what that is. Oh yeah, so all our um, clients who do trust with us mm-hmm. and clients who have had a uh, you know, loved one in a nursing home and done Medicaid planning with us, we have what we call our. our client care program, which is continuous access to uh, reliable expertise, means they can call us anytime. We're not gonna send them a bill if we need to talk to their financial planner about something. If they have general questions on their trust or their Medicaid, they need to meet with us. None of that's, there's no charge for that. It's covered under the Mm -hmm. annual fee. And we meet with them every year to update um, their finances, see where things are going, how things with the family, there have been any big changes, just so we can stay on top of it. You know, yeah. it's like everybody has a car, you have a furnace, you maintain that every year to make sure it runs when you really need it, right? Mm-hmm. That's the same thing with, with estate planning and with the Medicaid people. We want to make sure um, it's up to date and it's going to work for you when it's needed. These things should not be stagnant. So our clients, uh, most of them clients for life. Yeah. Yep. Most people, we have about 350 uh, families in our care program at this point in time. Wow. Um, I didn't think it was that many. Yeah. And we meet with them every year. And you guys know we have two annual events. Yes. Yeah, where it's there, a, yeah. a, a, you know, a luncheon and it's not about me, it's about them. And we bring in speakers and uh, topics that might be important to them, uh, you know, fraud against seniors and right. uh, different programs are available for seniors that may not work with our clients, but they may know somebody that yeah, that's very good. I know that Steve and I enjoy it because, you know, we get to eat. Yeah. And it's, a, it's a lunch. <laughs> <laughs> that's good for us. Yeah, and we do, we're able to do it in a couple of really nice places. The yeah. Suites down here and then the uh, Clayton Harbor, Harbor Hotel right? in yeah, that's beautiful. Clayton, New York. Yeah, good stuff, man. So uh, when do you think people should start planning? It, 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 are the holidays a good time to say, hey, look, we got the family together. Maybe we should go visit Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts. We get a lot of times that people say, my kids were in and they said, I got to get this done. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, a lot of times the, the children are the impetus. Sometimes the kids will notice changes in mom mm-hmm. or dad mm-hmm. because they haven't seen them in a while. Yeah. And it's more obvious than maybe people who are around mom and dad all at once. There's never a time not to have your ducks in a row, so to speak. Right. You know, a lot of people say, well, I'm not ready for it or I don't need it yet. And there's a Yiddish phrase, and I use it at my workshop all the time. Man plans, God laughs. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> so your schedule may be different than what the actual schedule is. You know, we all know of people that things have happened. Say, oh my goodness, how did that happen? Right. We have a client, uh, wife wasn't feeling well, went to bed. She's probably in her mid fifties, woke up, had a massive stroke, oh, uh, eight, eight, nine months in the hospital and rehab. And she can't use the left side of her body. Essentially, oh my goodness. And can't speak. Wasn't in the plans, yeah. you know, um, but 
those things happen to people. And if you have the right planning in place, we will have that covered from a legal end. You know, there's social and other things that go into all sure. those How do people figure out what the right planning is? Uh, it's part of our process, right? We're not a one size fits all. Uh, if you call my office, first thing we do is we're going to put you through in connection with a case manager. They may not be available right then, but we'll schedule a call at a good time. And those are people I've trained. They've been with me many years. Um, they can get down the basic information and they'll have a pretty good idea of what plan fits your needs. Hey, you know, I want to make sure that I don't lose my home to long-term care. Well, that's going to be an asset protection trust. Right. You know, I've got really good long-term care insurance. I just want to keep my family out of probate. I don't want them to go through the court system. I did that for my parents. It was a nightmare. That might be our probate avoidance trust. Or, you know, we're starting a new family. We're young. Uh, you know, you need a will that has a guardian in there. The most important thing you're ever going to do is name somebody to take care of your children if you can't. So there's different needs for everybody, and the case managers will fit you in right there and then get you started in the process. Um, and, and does that cost money? Do people have to pay for the that? case manager meeting on the phone? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we do charge for our initial meetings in the office. It's $250. I'll give you about an hour of time. And when you pick your plan, we're going to use that as the down payment. I got okay. You. So they're yeah. not losing it. Right. Oh, it's, it's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you don't go forward, that pays yeah. us for our time when, you know, they could have been working for other folks, but we're happy to sit down and talk to you, well, but it just covers our time. But yeah. why would people go to a, an attorney that um, doesn't specialize in this? Uh, they're, they're not aware of the depths of things that need to be covered. Um, you know, you wouldn't go to your general practitioner to have a heart surgery, oh, but yeah. people think that uh, lawyers can do everything and legally we can, right? Right. But they're just like I would not anymore try to do a personal injury case yeah. because I don't know it anymore. Uh, people who don't do this shouldn't do this. Um, there's, there's just too many nuances and things that go into Well, you play. teach some of this too. Mm -hmm. We do. I, I, we teach other attorneys and um, CPAs financial planners through a company called um, National Business Institute. We're on their uh, faculty list and we've done some other workshops and things. Yeah. So no workshops uh, coming up um, in, the, in the near term, right? No, we don't. It's one of the, it's always hard Thanksgiving. You know, I know it's always the yeah, last Christmas. before Thursday, but it seemed really late this year. Yeah. And then uh, the holidays just kind of got away. And, you know, we're, we're, we're growing again still. Um, seems like we're changing offices all the time. Right. Uh -huh. we're, we're, we're moving into a new office in Watertown. We have oh, an office right. up there. So we're just we're very, very busy. And um, we'll be back in January doing workshops. But you don't need to wait to a workshop. Yeah, because you can have these calls with your care people, yeah. right? Yeah, right. With, our, with our case managers. Case, case yeah. managers, yeah. yeah. The the um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, oh, the, for long-term care, um, what's the average price uh, if you get you know find yourself in long-term care these days? Well, locally, it's going to be a little over $500 a day. You're kidding. Maybe more. Tom, that's wow. 15 grand a month. I did the math. <laughs> yeah. Well, plus New York State generally has a 6.89% surcharge on top of that. So you're going to look at about $16,000 a month. So Jeez. what I would tell you, Tom, is for, and, and let me roll this in, yeah. the cost of probate on average is about 5%. So if you die with a $200,000 house, on average, it's going to cost your family ten grand just to go through that process. Mm -hmm. But for less than one half of one month in a nursing home, for about 14 days in a nursing home, you can have a plan that will protect your house from long-term care, keep your family out of probate when you're gone, and protect the assets you leave to your children so they don't go to an ex-spouse or creditors yeah. and wind up with your grandchildren. Interesting. We're going to unpack that a little more. Folks, stick around. Uh, he's a wealth of knowledge. It's attorney John Murphy, owner of Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts, and he's here on the local show for segment number two coming right up on 570 WSYR. Welcome back to The Local Show, a service of Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts and Geddes Federal Savings and Loan. The Local Show, featuring conversations with business owners, employees, and local business leaders about their successes, challenges, and reasons for doing business right here in Central New York. The Local Show, locally produced by Zoe Advertising. Now, here are your hosts, Tom and Steve. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's great that uh, you're here during the holidays. Boy, I did it again. Um, I, I've noticed that uh, I have this terrible habit of saying, like I'll say, uh, hey, welcome back and uh, 
<laughs> you know, and it's da. There's no da on the end of and. It just okay. ends, right? A N D. Unless, and. unless you're counting and a one and a two. <laughs> <laughs> <Ta -dum -tum. laughs> He's right, though. You know, it's crazy. And, you know, I listen. I, I hyper, of course, I hyper analyze my uh, speech patterns. And uh, I don't like it. But I hope you do, folks. Uh, you know, uh, better my speech patterns than Steve's. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> very nice. That's Thank wicked you. true, Tom. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> totally. There you go. We've been talking with attorney John Murphy, and we're going to continue that. Uh, conversation. See, continue the and the uh, yeah, conversation. That. Owner of Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts. You can see them at Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts dot com. And there you go. So we were talking. What were we were talking about before we left, uh, Steve? Uh, Do you I, even I, know? We were talking about lawyers. <laughs> yes, we were. <laughs> you know what I wanted to ask? You, you have a special person over there that seems to be ultra knowledgeable on everything. Because you were talking about case managers and things. What does Marie do over there? Marie does a little bit of everything. So Marie started with me when I started my firm just doing this stuff about nine years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, chief cook and bottle washer. Really? She would. Yeah. She's, uh, she seems to know and, everything about everything. Well, you know, she's been with me from the start. Time, yeah. And, um, you know, she loves meeting with clients and that's probably her favorite thing. And, yeah. You know, she helps review documents after they go through and make sure we got the I's dotted, T's crossed. She runs the, the numbers. Um, wow. She does personnel, um, you know, the den mother, whatever. Yeah, and, so. and the care program too, right? She's doing some things. We're with moving that? her into the care program. Um, she's getting to a point where she wants to maybe step out of some of the day to day stuff more and, and take care of the people that have taken care of us for so many years. Sure, and um, she'll be great in that role. Excellent. So, That's so Tom, Marie. I have crafted a list of trick questions. To oh, ask you have the questions? Yes, and the uh, folks, yeah. the, uh, hopefully, uh, these are questions that are probably on your mind. Yes, and um, Steve is going to okay. reiterate them. Yeah. Question number one. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, Here we go. Why does Tom keep complaining? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, There's and, a number uh, of reasons. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Biggest mistake people make? Not doing something. Waiting. Procrastination is the biggest mistake. Because what most people don't realize is they already have an estate plan in place. Yeah. It was made by the state of New York. Oh, goodness. And your money may wind up where you don't want it to go. <laughs> Right. Um, gives, gives me chills when he said that. <laughs> here we go. Question number two. The difference between a will and a trust. Oh, I don't know if we have enough time in this segment. Mo mostly wills require your family. In order to use a will, it has to go through the probate process. Probate is actually Latin for prove the will. Okay, So wills cannot be used by your executor unless a judge has approved them. I like to say authenticated. They're not looking for who gets what. Right. Was a will done correctly? Did the right people get notice? What do you mean the right people? Well, if you've disinherited a child, the child, even though they're not getting anything, is entitled to have a copy of the will that says they're not getting anything. Okay. Now, you don't have to be afraid because they're not entitled to that until you're dead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But they still get that. And if you can't find the child, it's going to slow it down. Trust, avoid all of that. Trust, keep things private. Wills make things public. Okay. How does a will protect people from long-term care? It does not. Ever? Ever. Never? Nope. Okay, do all trusts <laughs> protect people from long-term care or just some of them? No. No, revocable trusts do not protect your assets from long-term care. Only an asset protection trust does. Simple reason is this. With a will, you still own all your assets. If you own all your assets, you'd be expected to use those to pay for long-term care. With a revocable living trust, you have access to all your assets in the trust. You can do whatever you want with them. So Medicaid or the nursing home would say, well, you need to pay your bills. With an asset protection trust, the trust says, no, you can't use it for certain things, including long-term care. And therefore, that makes it protected. Now, it's fully protected from long-term care five years after you put things into the trust. Okay, so it's not five years from when you do the trust. You actually have to move your assets into that trust. Okay, so um, I'll ask a question off of that one. Um, a family member's in a nursing home. We're stuck. We're going to lose it all. There's nothing we can do. Absolutely not. We can save money even if you're in a nursing home. We're not going to save as much as if you had been proactive, but we can generally save at least 50%, sometimes more. There's different rules if you're married, not married, if you have children living in the house, different things. But if someone's in a nursing home, call us. You'll be surprised. You'll be shocked how much money that we can protect, even though they're already there. Okay. Uh, trusts are just for rich people. Could not be more false. Okay, think that's a it. biggie. Wait a minute. So say that again, because that isn't that the perception, though? It is because back in the day, 
right? It harkens back to the robber barons and trusts and things like that, the family trusts, the Rockefellers, the Kennedys, right? But our society has changed. It used to be that the middle class people didn't have to worry about long-term care. You didn't live that long. And when you got yeah. sick or had a heart attack, you died. Right. You know, in 1965, my grandfather walked out of our house at our, and, and fell down on the lawn. By the time my father got to him, he was dead from a heart attack. Oh, that's terrible. Okay. That's tragic, um, John. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. He, he, was, he was 65. Oh, my no. dad is now going to be 84. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Okay. That's your point. Yeah. Life expectancy. And medicine keeps us alive much longer. Right. And it's not necessarily when we're the healthiest. So now our concern is not dying that's the easy part from a financial standpoint <laughs> from a legal standpoint it's that long-term care cost so sure. that's new that's where trusts have evolved steve the trusts were there now to protect our assets from that biggest threat mm. to your life savings which is long-term care at sixteen thousand dollars a month for an average of 30 uh, months why does it have to be so much john well break it down to an hour hourly rate Five hundred dollars a day divided by I'm going to use twenty five. Yeah, right. These right. are the math. Twenty dollars. <laughs> oh wait, it's twenty dollars an hour. Twenty five dollars uh, yeah, an hour, yeah. right? Twenty five dollars an hour. Yeah. Heat, lights, gas. You know, food. Yeah. Sure. It's not expensive for what you get. It's just every day, right? If you're yeah, going to pay right, for that right, at home, it'll be at least twenty five. Okay, next, next question. Here we go. Um, give the money or the house to the kids. That way, the nursing home won't get it. Well. Not necessarily, because the nursing home might sue your children to get it back, mm. okay? And the worst thing about giving your house away is you've given up control. If you give your house to your children and you want to sell it, it's not your choice. If you give your house to your children and your child dies before you do, your daughter-in-law or son-in-law, who maybe you don't get along with very well, might own your house. If everyone's on the same page and you decide to sell the house, your kids are probably going to have to pay capital gains on the sale because it's not their house. Okay. Wow. But what if they put their name on the checking account and the bank account? So so they put the, the kids' names on those. Does that help it, make it worse, better? That does not protect it from long-term care. Was it your money when it went in? Yes, then it's your money now. Is your social security oh. on it? Social security number on it? Yes, that's your money. You, and the problem is if you give money away to the kids four years from now, you go to a nursing home and say, I need that money back. They're going to make me ineligible for Medicaid. Uh what do you mean you need the money back? Uh, we, right. we have a roof. Yeah, uh, right. I, I have a new car. It, uh, yeah. If people have, have um, hear what you said and go, oh my gosh, I did that, can they reverse course or is it too late? No, we have people right now, we're doing a trust and the kids already had the house. We're going to take the house back from the kids and put it in the trust. Very and it's nice. still protected. The, the five years is already run for Medicaid. Mm -hmm. That's still in place because the house didn't come back to the parents and then into the trust. The house went from the kids to the trust. I'm sure that uh, you people listening are, are you know, you generating you people, yeah, you, 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 people? You, you folks, <laughs> so you're uh, <laughs> generating more questions in your head. And uh, yeah, <laughs> well, you can ask those questions to attorney John Murphy on your own time. OK, uh, owner of Safe Harbor Wills and Trust right there. Thank you, John. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Tom. And I look forward to hearing from you how things are going at Newhouse and the remedial program. Yes. <laughs> As I get more training. Yeah, so we'll need that. All right, coming up next, we're going to talk with Pat Winslow. He's the general manager of Hides of Liverpool right here on The Local Show on 570 WSYR.